We are going to be reading section 27.3, Human Impact on Air Resources. Can you see the haze that seems to hover above the buildings in figure 2717? This yellow-brown haze is a type of air pollution called smog, which is the photochemical haze caused by the action of solar radiation on an atmosphere polluted with hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides, mostly from automobile, automobile exhaust systems. When smog occurs in a city, the air becomes harmful to breathe, especially for those who already have some difficulty breathing. The major chemical in smog is ozone, a gas molecule made up of three oxygen atoms. Recall that in the upper atmosphere, solar radiation converts oxygen gas into ozone. Ozone is the upper atmosphere. Ozone in the upper atmosphere is beneficial because it absorbs and filters one harmful ultraviolet radiation. However, around level ozone However, ground level ozone is produced when combinations of air pollution, including nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, and hydrogen carbons are exposed to sunlight. Ozone irritates the eyes, nose, noses, throats, and lungs of humans, and is also as harm, has harmful effects on plants. Air pollution also occurs in the form of particular particulate matter. The solid particles of such materials as ash, dust, pollen, and asbestos fibers range in the size that microscopic bits of large grains. When humans breathe in particles, they can lo lodge in lung tissue, disrupt normal function, and cause breathing difficulties and lung disease. Global impacts of air pollution. Recently, it has become clear that human impact, human activities can affect earth on a global scale. The global atmospheric effects of air pollution, including global warming, ozone depletion, and acid precipitation, global warming. Recall from chapter 14 that in greenhouse effect, is a natural phenomenon in which Earth's atmosphere traps heat in the atmosphere, in the troposphere to warm Earth. A phenomenon related to this greenhouse effect is global warming, which is the increase in Earth's average surface temperature. Whereas the greenhouse effect is a natural phenomenon, global warming is partly caused by humans. Human activities, especially the burning of fossil fuels by automobiles, are largely responsible for increased levels of carbon dioxide, which in the which is the main greenhouse gas that causes global warming. Fossil fuels contain carbon, and when they are burned, the carbon combines oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, around 1,850 1, humans have been burning fossil fuels in every increasing, at an ever-increasing rate. Figure 2718 shows how atmospheric carbon dioxide has increased over the past 250 years. Studies indicate that... Earth's mean surface temperature has risen about 0.5 degrees Celsius in the last century. Some scientists hypothesize that this warming trend is the result of global warming and predict that global warming could rise average temperatures by 1 to 3.5 degrees Celsius in the next 100 years. Although this may not seem like much of a temperature change, the consequences could be extreme. Wind and rainfall patterns might change the effect and affect the major agricultural belts. If climate patterns change too rapidly, plant and animal species may be unable to adapt and may become extinct. Glaciers and ice caps could melt, raising the sea level and flooding low-lying areas. Other scientists, however, assert the human that humans have not kept weather records long enough to tell whether the present rate of global warming is an artificial or natural phenomenon. They argue that the increase in Earth's temperature could be part of the natural pattern of climate change. Ozone depletion. Another global change that is a result of human activity involves the ozone layer in the stratosphere. The ozone layer serves as a protective shield as it absorbs and filters out harmful UV radiation, which has been linked to human eye damage and skin cancer, as well as reduced crop yields. In the early 1970s, scientists first suggested that pro- Coriofluorocarbons could destroy ozone in the upper atmosphere. Although CFCs are stable and harmless near the Earth's surface, scientists now know that they destroy ozone molecules when they migrate into the upper atmosphere, as shown in Figure 2719. Since the mid-1980s, atmospheric studies have detected a thinning of the ozone layer, including an extremely thin area over Antarctica and the publicized that was publicized in the news media as an ozone hole. Because of the CFCs in the atmosphere, were released from old refrigerators refrigerators, cleaning agents, and propellants in aerosol cans, this ozone depletion entirely depletion is entirely a result of human activity. 
air precipitation. Another major air pollution problem is acid precipitation, which is defined as precipitation with a pH of less than 0 .0, 5.0. Recall from chapter three that pH is a measure of the acidity, acidity, acidity of a substance on a scale of zero to 14, with seven being neutral. Natural precipitation has a pH of about 5.0 to 5.6, which is slightly acidic. Acid precipitation forms when sulfur dioxide and nitrogen occurs. Oxides combine with atmospheric moisture to create sulfuric acid and nitrate acid. Acid precipitation includes acidic rain, snow, fog, mist, gas, and dust. Although volcanoes and marshes add sulfur gas to the atmosphere. 90% of the sulfur emissions in eastern North America are of human origin. Figure 2720 shows comparison of the different sources of acid precipitation. The type of acid precipitation that is received the most attention is caused by coal burning power plants in the mid Midwestern United States. These plants burn coal that contains significant amounts of the mineral phyrates and other sulfur bearing compounds. When sulfur rich coal is burned, large amounts of sulfur dioxide are released. The sulfur dioxide generated by Midwestern power plants rises high into the air, into the air and is carried by winds towards the eastern coast of the United States and Canada. When acids are carried into wet weather, they become part of the rain, snow, or fog that falls to the ground in areas far from their source. When acid precipitation makes its way into surface waters, such as lakes, streams, ponds, and rivers, it causes damage to aquatic ecosystems and vegetation. Acid precipitation also affects plants and soil. Although trees and areas affected by acid precipitation usually aren't killed outright, acid precipitation weakens them, so they become more susceptible to damage from in insects, pests, and disease pests and disease. In addition, acid precipitation depletes the soil of some nutrients needed by plants. Acid, precip acid precipitation damages stone buildings and statues as shown in figure 2721, especially those made of limestone. By accelerating the rate of weathering, it also can corrode metal stru structures such as bridges, thereby shortening their lifespan and increasing maintenance costs, reducing air pollution. Air pollution is difficult to control because it travels with the wind pollution produced in one area in one area travels across borders to neighboring regions thus solving air pollution problems require requires the cooperation of both cooperation of both state and national governments in the last decade the governments of many na nations have met several times in an attempt to reduce global air pollution especially that caused by carbon dioxide and cfcs in the United States, Congress has passed laws to reduce air pollution. For example, the 1990 Clean Air Act set specific reduction goals and enforcement policies for many air types of air pollution. This act called for the United States to reduce its sulfur dioxide emissions to 50% of their 1980 levels by the year 2000 and to reduce emissions of nitrogen oxides as well. You will, fill, you will find out how the amount of air pollution Politics in the United States has changed since the 1970s in the problem solving lab on the previous page. Many coal burning power plants have installed a device such as the wet scrubber illustrated in figure 2722 to reduce emissions of particular particulate matter and sulfur dioxide. In North America and in Western Europe, the, show, the use of low sulfur coal and natural gas have helped to reduce such emissions. However, scientists agree that most Effective way to reduce air pollution is to remove older, higher pollution vehicles from roadways. It is estimated that just 10% of the motor vehicles in operation produce 50 to 60% of the air pollution generated by gasoline powered engines. Switching to newer cars with more efficient engines could significantly reduce air pollution throughout the world.